Uh, hello folks, Kevin here again. Today I'm doing a rather interesting hike in that I walked out of my front door and I'm not using the car at all to get to where I'm going. I'm very lucky in that less than five minutes away from where I live there are lots of walking and skiing trails and uh, if you check out some of my other videos um, I'll put a little link just up here uh, you can see where I've been skiing here in winter. This trail is part of St. Catherine's Trail or Puha Katarinan Polku and uh, it stretches for something like 15 kilometers total. The trail part that I'm on now winds through the suburbs of Turku and uh, maybe you can hear the cars in the background. Okay, so now I have entered the Katarina Locks or Catherine's Valley. This wooded valley which is dominated by oak trees. It's a nature reserve area so you're not allowed to camp here. Today is Finland's National Nature Day. So as I say in Finnish, Hyvä Luonnonpaiva as it's National Nature Day. Finns are actively encouraged to get out and go for a walk in nature. Make a picnic or you know even sleep overnight in a tent or a hammock. Okay, so we're through the first part of the valley. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of trees that are have been either cut down or have fallen down naturally. Because it's a nature reserve, they don't clear the wood away. It's just left there to rot. By allowing the trees to rot naturally, um, it invites or encourages different species of fungus and insects that will eat the wood or lay their larvae inside it and therefore promote higher biodiversity. The really nice thing about these paths are that they are lit with street lights and uh, you can basically have a lighted path up to 10 o'clock at night. Um, in the summer it's not so much a big a deal but in winter it's very handy to come and ski on these trails when uh, it's otherwise pitch black at half past four in the afternoon. Now we change habitat somewhat and we go through a small bay which is now dominated by um, lake reeds which grow up to three meters tall, sometimes taller. We made it out of the re nature reserve and uh, now I'm going to the actual campsite. So this is just regular forest. I'm allowed to camp overnight based on every man's laws or every man's rights. Um, still about maybe a kilometer to go to the campsite. I've camped here before, both with tent and with hammock. So the uh, place is quite familiar to me. Oh, lovely cup of berries tea. There's nothing like it. I don't know if you can hear that sound in the background. There's a bird going bip, 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 bip. It's a small black and white woodpecker. They're fairly common around here. So, for a snack, we've got peanut butter Snickers today. And I've also got some specifically Finnish chocolate. Just plain milk chocolate from a very well known Finnish brand called Karl. It looks like Phaser, but as you pronounce it, Fatser. Karl Fatser. And um, yeah, since moving to Finland and eating this stuff, I am um, not such a huge fan of Cadbury's anymore. I find it way too sweet.
Well, good morning, folks. So I had a okay sleep last night. Um, it wasn't cold or anything. It's just, uh, yeah, the rain was quite heavy on the tarp and uh, the sound kept me awake. But other than that, uh, yeah, I slept quite nicely. I've just had breakfast and I'm uh, about to start to pack up. But before I do, I thought that I would give you a quick rundown of my tarp setup and my hammock setup. As you can see, I have a three by three meter tarp which I've put along the ridge line diagonally so that there's a triangle hanging down each side and giving pretty good coverage. Although it rained quite heavily last night, uh, the tarp kept me nice and dry. The tarp is from DD Hammocks and it's the 3x3 three three meter super light version. So here we have the suspension system or part of it. Uh, I decided to swap out the original DD uh, tree hugger straps and instead use a system from Ticket to the Moon. Uh, a couple of reasons for this. One is the attachment system to the tree is dead simple. You basically loop it through itself and it'll just hang there nicely until you come to clip the rest of the suspension system to the, to the strap. And then uh, it has a series of loops or daisy chain loops that you can adjust where you actually want to hook your uh, the rest of your suspension system on and here I've used a, a, a carabiner from DD hammocks okay so now I'll just flip over the tarp over so you can see the hammock setup so so there's my hammock I did actually need the mosquito net last night the uh, mozzies were quite hungry so it was quite nice just to get into the hammock and zip up so continuing along from the suspension system, we have a Ticket to the Moon tree strap, we have a carabiner, and then I have a whoopee sling. And this allows me also, as well as the uh, daisy chain, to get extra uh, distance options between trees. So I can actually uh, choose trees that are more than six meters apart. I can also then adjust the height of the hammock and also get extra distance using a whoopee sling and from the whoopee sling then I've used a soft shackle I got these for about five euros in a hardware shop They're for actually uh, yachting but they held up really well the next stage then is I have modified the uh, hammock I've taken away the original straps that came with the hammock and I spliced uh, some am steel making two uh, basically a piece with uh, two loops on each end so it's called a dog bone and i've done that the same on the other side and then i've added a structural ridge line which runs over the top of the uh, mosquito net it was important to make sure that these were long enough so that when i added the structural ridge line it would be high enough to actually clear the mosquito net and wouldn't get in the way the Ridge line is also adjustable so that I have also added a a berry here which allows me to uh, get a little bit of extra length or tighten it up depending on how I actually want the lay of the hammock to be. Um, I'll have to measure exactly the distance from here to the opposite end and find out what 83% of that total length is and then adjust this ridge line accordingly for the sort of the, the base measurement for the, the best possible lay. Inside the hammock, I have an enlightened equipment, uh, minus six degree or 20 Fahrenheit uh, top quilt, which is very comfortable and really puffy because it's pulled down. And uh, to keep you warm underneath, then I have the glow, uh, under quilt from a Bushman and this was supposed to be rated to minus 12. It's a little bit on the fiddly side making sure that it fits properly. It tends to sag quite easily with the shock cores that come with it um, which is a pity because uh, when it's actually in place perfectly it keeps you really warm. If it sags at all uh, you get an air pocket underneath you and then you can feel the cold on your back. Right, 
all packed up and ready to go. Just a last check to make sure that there's no rubbish or no trace left. It's very interesting how the perception of your pack weight changes as you hike. By the time I got here yesterday, I was pretty convinced that the uh, my pack had doubled in weight. And when I took it off, oh, the feeling of lightness. This morning, now that I've packed up all my gear, but I've eaten all my food and I've used up a large part of my water, my pack seems incredibly light. And uh, rather than it being, oh god, I've got to carry this pack, it's more like, hey, this pack is light. I feel good. Finland is quite a country for extremes, relative to Ireland anyway. The last time I was here, I was skiing and it was minus 20 degrees. And uh, yeah, here we are at the end of August 2023. And according to the weather forecast, it's 25 degrees plus. So uh, pretty amazing when you think that I'm living in a country which has easily a 40 degree temperature difference from season to season. Another advantage of hiking and camping near urban areas is the fact that if you get tired or something goes wrong, uh, there's usually a bus stop. That particular bus, if I jumped on it now, I'd be home in 10 minutes. Mm, tempting, tempting. One piece of gear that I'm very glad that I got is a water bladder. It's a three liter water bladder from Osprey. So it fits in my rucksack quite nicely. And I'm getting to about the end of that now, but it's uh, very handy to just spill a drink when you want and not have to reach back and do gymnastics and contortionism to try and get the drink bottle out of the, out of the pockets. My feet are sore. I have been wearing wide toed sandals all summer while I've been working. Since I've been hiking now the last time and this time, I have the Salomon, Salomon GTX, the first, first ones. I've had them for a few years now. They're good boots and they're light, but uh, the toe box isn't so wide. And um, my small toes curl in a bit. With the wide toed sandals, this isn't a problem. My, my feet can splay quite nicely. But uh, yeah, with the Salomons, the pinky is really is squeezed in and I can feel it now in my, in my feet. Yeah, I'm thinking about actually getting some barefoot shoes, uh, maybe even some, if I like them and they, they work for me, I might even consider some stage down the line getting some uh, barefoot hiking boots. I'm not sure how they'll work in the winter, of course, but certainly for three season, they could be quite good. But uh, yeah, watch this space, see how it goes. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. I hope you enjoyed the adventure in the hammock, in some suburban hammock camping. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll catch you on the next trail. So this is Kevin signing off. All the best. Moi moi.